YouTube as it going the Godows is back and the NFL schedules are out and I'm here to predict how many wins each team could get this season in my opinion we'll also take a look at those Vegas win totals you can play along in the comments where they hit that over or they hit the under on their total starting with the AFC East teams the Buffalo Bills their win total set at 10 and a half and then where I ended up with in the win range was 10 to 12 so I tried to do three different scenarios for each team so for the Bills, I have winning 10 games, 11 games, or 12 games, kind of the range I'm at. Um, I like right in the middle there. You know, maybe at 11 wins, probably my final prediction, but, you know, more likely 12 than 10, perhaps. I think it's a little bit of a myth that the Bills' defense got worse. I see people saying that. Uh, I, di I disagree. Uh, they moved on some, from, from some big names. Remember, they were really beat up on defense. I mean, they already didn't have Tredavious White all season as well. Um, you know, Matt Milano's their most important defensive player. He comes back that by default makes them better. They have young players developing, although they drafted very well. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's a that's a that's a inaccurate take that they got worse. And I think people will say the offense got worse because uh, no more Stephon Diggs, and maybe that could be the case. But I'm not really worried. Josh Allen's a big time playmaker, and and he'll uh, make his weapons better. You know, James Cook is still improving. So I still think the Bills are in that win range there. Um, it seems like every regular season they kind of have that stretch where they have, you know, a little bit of a, a rough stretch. So you know, maybe that kind of keeps them out of the 13-14 win range. I could see 13, to be honest. I could see it. But uh, 11 or 12 is really where I'm at for the Buffalo Bills. For the Patriots, yeah, I'm in that 4-6 to six win range. Their over-under is 4.5. Um, so right there, kind of where I'm at as well. Um, you know, we'll see how they are post Bill Belichick. I think the defense will be fine. Offensively, they'll have their ups and downs. I mean, I guess they got better in terms of the receiver unit, but there's still really no player there that's going to for sure, you know, be consistent and take over. We'll see if they start Brissett right away uh, or if it's Drake May. I, I think they'll be better. They'll be better with May. I'm a big May fan, but even as a big May fan, he, he's going to have his struggles year one. You know, he doesn't have the most perfect team. You know, could they be that surprise team like the Texans? I thought about it because I was super high on Stroud last year, super high on May this year. So maybe the quarterback is just the answer. But uh, Stroud was way more pro ready and he had much better weapons around him. But it also kind of felt like he created those weapons. So can May come in here and create some big time weapons in New England? Certainly possible, but they're going to have their growing pains here. So uh, I think they'll be in that range of four to six wins. The Jets are a little tricky because, of course, they could be injured. You got Aaron Rodgers coming off Achilles. You have the you know multiple offensive linemen, including some guys they added. You know Tyrone Smith, that, uh, but guys they already had Elijah Vera Tucker that that could be injured. Um, Mike Williams, you know, so they have a lot of those concerns there. I'm not worried about the defense, but on paper they're they're better than a nine win team. That's for sure. Um, but a lot of questions here. I think they'll end up in that nine to eleven win range. Uh, you know, tough playing the Bills and the Dolphins twice. Yeah, I'm thinking more 10, 10 or 11. 10 or 11 wins for the New York Jets there. Uh, and their win total is at 9.5. So it's just a team I wouldn't bet on if you're looking to bet on win totals just because the, you don't know how healthy they'll be and how, for how many games. But it does does look like there's a decent chance if they, for the most part, stay healthy, they go over the 9.5 wins. Dolphins, I have in the same range. They also have the same win total, 9.5. They did lose some key players. They're a little tricky, too, because they were so explosive for most of their games in the regular season last year. Um, they, they struggled to beat the better teams. So how, how will that go this year? Uh, but so many good players, and they, had, they were so beat up at times. So maybe they could be on that higher end, closer to 11 wins. Could Tua even pro, you know, progress even more this year? That's possible as well. Uh, I again, kind of like the Jets. I feel pretty good about them winning ten or eleven games. The Miami Dolphins. Uh, next to the NFC East teams, the Commanders, six to eight wins. They're a little tricky because, and they do have a six and a half win total, but they are young. It's a whole new team, so they could have growing pains. But they also could be such a tricky game plan early in the year. Uh, for other teams, you just don't know what to expect from this team. Like either side of the ball, it's all new, brand new. I mean, people have seen Dan Quinn's defense before, but not with these specific type of players. So it's not going to be exactly the same as the Cowboys' defense. So um, they might be, they might start off a little hotter than people expect. But you know, they'll probably, if that's the case, maybe they'll come back down to earth, or maybe they get better down the stretch. 
Uh, I think it's safe to say they'll be in that six to eight win, win range. I'll probably end up predicting them. Yeah, right around, around that Vegas win total. That's a good. I think that's a good win total. Probably one I would not bet on in terms of uh, the over under on the win totals. Giants. I'm gonna go six to eight wins as well. I was thinking about five to seven wins because man, they lost. Uh, you know, obviously losing Xavier McKinney for an example is pretty big, but offense losing a guy like Saquon Barkley, so they lost key players. They're not even sure about Daniel Jones. Is he healthy? Is he the is he their their guy? They were beat up last year. Could happen again. Um, you know that they lost their defensive coordinator, which it sounded like more so that Martindale left. Uh, you know, not that the defense can't be good. They do add Brian Burns. So on paper, they got some st- some studs, some stars. You know, Dexter Lawrence included. I mean, neighbors could be one right away. But they have some holes. They have some weak spots. How healthy will the quarterback position be? How healthy will the offensive line be? So they're a little tricky, but I was so I was gonna go five to seven, but just remembering, you know, can't base too much off the year before. What about two years ago? Could they get back on track like that year? It's certainly possible. So they they they're a team I almost want to have a big range. I kind of limited myself, um, you know, for the win range. Do it like three different numbers, you know, so six, seven, eight here. There's some teams I want to do a wide range. There's some teams I want to do a, like a really small range. The Giants are one of those teams I want a wider range for, but I felt pretty good in that six to eight win range. I probably end up predicting them seven wins right in the middle. Most of these teams right in the middle is where, where we kind of we are predicting them at the moment. Uh, next, the Eagles. I like the Eagles' schedule actually. It's a little bit of a difference between the Eagles and the Cowboys. Uh, Cowboys finishing. The, we'll talk about them next. They finished first last year. The Eagles finished second. Um, but the Eagles are a little tricky. Uh, it's uh, maybe it's a little bold, even though on paper they look like a 10 to 12 win team. It's a little bold because at the end of last year, you know, I'm not really a big base everything off last year guy, but at the end of last year, it means a little something. At the end of last year, they look like much worse than their record, like much worse than that. And I don't, I can't imagine they will pick up where they left off, which would be a bad thing, but I guess there's certainly a possibility maybe it doesn't click right away in the beginning of the season maybe they start a little slow I can see those as scenarios so maybe they if that's the case the the win range should be a little less a little lower I should say but I like the way their schedule looks right now um yeah I got the the week one games 50 50 I like you know Falcons would be tough but I like the Eagles chances week two so uh, I, I like how it's laid out. So 10 to 12 wins is how I feel for the Philadelphia Eagles. I, if I had to narrow it down even more, I'm probably going to predict, yeah, 11, you know, 10, 11 wins. 11 wins is where I'm feeling here. So just over that 10 and a half win total. But there's a couple that with these Vegas win totals that I really, really like. And some betting apps are different. Some you can find steals that are maybe lower than where they're at. But uh, we'll talk about more here in, in a second. But the Cowboys... Uh, I don't love the Cowboys schedule, actually, but you think it'd be some, you know, my thoughts would be somewhat similar to the Eagles, but slight difference makes all the difference. I have them at 9 to 11 wins, uh, and it's it's weird seeing 9 up there with the Cowboys because they consistently win a lot of football games in the regular season. So I'm not going to sit here and predict them to win 9 games. Um, so my decision here was 9 through 11 or 10 through 12, and I don't love their schedule. I thought... I did like the way they drafted. How much of an impact is that going to be right away? Um, you know, is a question there. But I did, I did love their draft. But my point I'm getting to is, I, I, I feel like they got a little bit worse uh, this offseason. Losing Dan Quinn, even though I do like Mike Zimmer, that that could be fun. Um, and then not being able to be super active in free agency and losing, you know, some things here and there. But uh, you know, mainly at the running back position. But so I actually felt a little more comfortable with the 9-11 range rather than the 10-12. to But it's another one of those teams where I really want to narrow it down, get specific. They're going to win 10 or 11 games, I feel like, the Cowboys. so And their win total is at 10.5, so probably one I wouldn't touch. But, yeah, it's a, it could be a little tougher this year compared to normal, but they sh- still should be in contention for the NFC East. Right now I'm leaning Eagles, and I'm on a roll with picking the winner on uh, uh, in that division. I uh, had the Cowboys last year, in which I got ripped for. I had the Eagles the, the year before. Um, leading Eagles, mainly the schedule and the difference in additions in subtra- subtractions in, in the offseason you know, this year. Uh, Bengals, yeah, this one's tough. and I, It's a team that you got to be a little, 
uh, worried when bet betting the win total because there's a lot of durability concerns, especially at the quarterback position with Joe Burrow here. But I like the Bengals. I mean, this team put up a fight even when they were beat up at the quarterback position and in other places as well. Receivers missing games. DJ Reader missing a lot of games. They don't have DJ Reader this year, obviously. But um, this is a well-coached team. It's a very, very talented football team. I don't think the offensive, offensive line has always been kind of the question, but I don't think it's really getting any worse um, it could be around the same. It could be better. I can see either of those. I don't see it being worse at all. Um, the weapons are still there for the most part. Um, you know, if Joe Burrow's on the field, he's going to be very good. Defensively, so well coached. I know the defense will step up a little bit this year. I like them as 11-13 to 13 win team. I think they're that good of a team. It's just what's going to stop that getting injured, you know. But, I mean, any team really could get beat up. But I... I'd probably be predicting them. I kind of like their schedule as well. Well, again, they kind of finished below where they like where they they are they were last year, like on on paper because of injuries. So that kind of makes sense that their schedule looks pretty favorable for the most part. They do have a tough division, so it's not the easiest schedule in the world. You got to play those teams twice, uh, but. Yeah, I like them like when you know feeling like twelve games right now with the Cincinnati Bengals. It's just all it's all it is is staying healthy. Like if they stay healthy, like I don't see a world where a, a scenario where they win less than eleven games. If it is, it's got to be ten. You know, so that's where I'm at with the Bengals. Uh, the Steelers seven and nine. I was originally thinking eight to ten because that's like the Steelers win range. Uh, usually they have a favorable schedule. Like usually we're going like, man, another year where the Steelers got like did a lot of winnable games. It's kind of odd, but this year I don't really have that right now. Um, just so used to them having that, but they're going to put up a fight with anyone that the Steelers are about. They sneak into the playoffs. They're going to, you know, they're, they're very consistently winning nine or, you know, 10 games, but based on their schedules at, you know, Russ on the decline, I, I don't mind the Arthur Smith higher. And I love Roman Wilson, but you're know, losing Deontay Johnson uh, in there with Pickens is, is a little tough. Um, that's tough. Though. I think they drafted pretty well again. You know, a adding Fatani. I mean, that's huge. The offensive line should be better. I just don't like their schedule compared to most years, actually. Uh, but th it's another team that I again. There's some teams that I want a bigger range. And there's some teams I want a smaller range when predicting wins. And I, the Steelers are probably one of the – like, I feel pretty good they're going to win eight or nine games. Uh, so that's where I'm at with them. Win total is at eight and a half. So, yeah, my my win range ended up being the ballpark of that as well. So it's pretty cool to kind of compare. They all ended up pretty much in, in the ballpark. Uh, the Browns are a little tricky. Will they stay healthy? I mean, they, didn't, they didn't stay healthy last year, and they still won a bunch of games. I would not expect, though, that to happen this year. If they got beat up – they're not going to win a ton of games. I think kind of things bounced their way a little bit. Schedule was a little favorable with, you know, other teams also being a little beat up when they were playing them. So, um, but it's a very talented team when healthy. It's just where's Deshaun Watson going to be at uh, if he's on the field and it, which Deshaun Watson are we going to get, uh, you know, and then uh, how much Nick Chubb are we going to get. Defense is really solid. They got a little predictable at the end of last year, so they're going to tweak things for the better this year. So they're a little tricky. I feel like that win total is a little low, though. It's a good team, I think, built to win football games in the regular season. Um, so I got them getting over eight and a half. And the bottom line to me is nine. But if they get completely beat up again, I don't think they're going to repeat winning a bunch of games while beat up. You know, they they might they there's a chance they stay fully healthy this year and they win less games than last year when they have a better team this year if they're fully other than last year. It's just how the NFL works, you know, because other teams get better or worse. There's other injuries, you know, other teams, you know, million different factors. So that's why a lot of fans want to go, well, we, my team did this last year, and this happened to us this year, so we're going to do this this year. That's really not how it works ever, to be honest. Uh, but I do like the Browns to get hit that over. I feel pretty good about them. Maybe predict them to win 10 games this year. Uh, the Ravens, they got a 10 to 12 range, so maybe not quite as many as last year, but right around that ballpark. Uh, it's tricky, though, because it's a team that dominates the regular season. Well, coach, Lamar's impossible to stop. They, ask, they, they add, not ask, they add another guy uh, that dominates in the regular season and it's such a game plan problem, Derrick Henry. So, they're going to win a lot of games with Lamar and Derrick Henry alone. Uh, but you worry about the offensive line. It's definitely worse this year. Um, you worry about losing uh, the coaches that they have lost to. That, that's pretty huge. And they got a much tougher schedule. So 
bump it down a little bit, but I feel pretty good about them. 10-12 range, they'll probably win 11 or 12 games, which means Vegas did a hell of a job with that 11.5 because I think they're going to win 11 or 12 games, so it's not a team I would bet on there. Uh, the Bears, uh, their win total is at eight and a half. I got them in that range as well. It's just seven to nine wins. I thought about eight to ten. I, I really feel for the Bears, they're a team with a smaller range for me in terms of win total. I think they're going to win eight or they're going to win nine games. Um, so I had a decision between do I go seven to nine or do I go eight to ten? What is more likely for me to see seven wins or a whopping ten wins for the Chicago Bears? Uh, I think how young, you know, and how there could be some growing pains. I think more likely to seven, but I really feel good about them. Eight or nine wins. They're going to be tough to game plan for early. Just don't know what to expect. Um, I wouldn't expect Caleb Williams to be fully consistent. Remember, he struggled to win the, against the better teams in college. So is he going to come in here and consistently play great? He doesn't really need to, to, to judge him, you know. So he can have his hiccups here and there. Uh, but the defense played really well at the end of last year. They they came, they're one of those sneaky sneaky teams, uh, you know. So I like them winning eight or nine games, and there there's a win total that is pretty good, I guess, with the eight and a half, um, because that that's where I'm at with them as well. Vikings Vikings are a little tricky because looking at the schedule, it's much tougher than I expected to be for a team that finished third in the division. Um, it's pretty damn tough. Don't love the layout for them, who they play. Uh, so that actually made me want to be a little lower than six to eight. But then factoring in this team on paper, minus the mystery at quarterback, looks pretty good. The offensive line is probably as good as it's been, especially at tackle. They have the weapons. They actually have a running back now in Aaron Jones. Defensively, I'm a little. I think mean, you know the defense. I think will be inconsistent. I've had people. I live in Chicago. I have people come up to me and be like. Yeah, the Vikings defense will be tough, you know, when we when the Bears play them, whoever they're talking about. And I'm like, eh, you know, yeah, maybe give them a little bit too much credit. But, I, I, you know, they are tough. They are tough. They got some playmakers. Brian Flores is a good defensive coach. They kind of got figured out at the end of last year, though. So I think they'll have their weeks where the defense looks like a Brian Flores defense looks really good, and there's the weeks where they're going to be off, like uh, give up some yards and points. So I don't think we'll have much things consistent there. Um and I say we because that's my team, but I, I so the, the schedule part makes me want to go. It's hard to see them win five games, but five to seven, and that. But how much talent they have, and they had the mess they had last year with like switching quarterbacks. Now they get to pick their quarterback unless somebody gets injured. So you think they could be in a better situation this year? Um, so that kind of makes me want to go to the seven to nine range. So we kind of split the difference. I feel like they're gonna win. I want to say seven or eight games, and their win total is at six and a half. So actually, we're over that, but it's right around there. The schedule is tough, so maybe they could end up with the six. Uh, six to eight is where I'm at with the Vikings right now. Packers, I like the Packers for this year. Um, I I probably higher on him uh, on him on them than most people. Maybe not Packers fans, but. Uh, if they're there, I'm sure a lot of them are, are excited about them after what we saw at the end of last year. But I think he's gonna be a really good football team this year. I mean, I think Lafleur is a great coach. He, you know, he, he can game plan for sure. Jordan loves an up and comer. It's a little tricky because what if we get some of those moments that we got from Jordan Love for a stretch of last season where weren't that they he, he wasn't that great? You know, it's possible that can pop up here and there. But the way he progressed, the way he developed, I think we could see more and more of that this year. So I think he'll be solid. The offense line so well coached, always solid. Running game is is always good. Uh, even when it's a little beat up, and now you get Josh Jacobs, and you get even better, even more physical in terms of that running game. And you had Marshawn Lloyd, too. Um, so they're going to be able to win the games with the pass, with the run. And then defensively, they always look so good on paper on defense, and they're underwhelming, but they switch defensive coordinators, and it's a little bit of a mystery how he'll call the defense compared to past years. But I, I like how that defense looks. I think they'll be solid, better than better than people expect. I think this could be the best defense in the division. So, and I, I like their schedule. I think it's you know it's is it like super easy? No, uh, I like the schedule for how good of the team that team this is. So I put them in the eleven to thirteen win range. Uh, thirteen could be a little much. I feel pretty good about them winning eleven or twelve. They're gonna win eleven or twelve there again. I did a kind of three difference range for every single team. Um, I like the over nine and it's one of my favorites. Nine and a half. They're, this team's gonna win more. This they're gonna win ten or more games here, I, unless something disastrous happens. But you can't really predict that. You could predict it with some teams that has that have durability issues. But um, I think it's a really good football team. They're gonna surprise people this year, even though I think most people are ex expecting them to be pretty decent. 
Um, so, I, I, yeah, high on them. And I like that win total. I like I like the over. Uh, Lions, yeah, almost went 11 to 13. You know, 10 to, them and the Packers are going to have a battle. Uh, they're going to have a battle this year. Then the Lions schedule is a little bit tougher. Um, this team is built to just dominate, especially in the regular season. Like they're they can win with the run, they can win with the pass, they can out physical you can, they can manage the clock. The clock they they got better on defense. They got corners now. They got young players developing. Um, so that part wanted me to go 11 to 13 range, even though it's not much of a difference here. But a little bit tougher of a schedule and. Yeah, I thought you know they had a lot of those like close calls or like a lot of those Dan Campbell gamble moments that like that's either going to win the game or lose the game that kind of went their way last year and it could happen again, you know, way more than not, you know, like last year. Maybe that just works in the regular season, um, but yeah, so maybe not all of those kind of go their way this year. So it's that's where I'm at. It's like 10 to 12, 11 to 13. I, I, another team like, like when I narrowed down with the Packers, 11 or 12 wins, that's kind of where I'm at with the Lions. They're going to win 11 or 12 games. So I can narrow that range a little bit more. Um, so that if I think they're going to win 11 or 12 range at 10 and a half looks pretty good as well, but not, I, I like the Packers one a bit more. That one's at nine and a half, um, a little easier of a schedule. Um, I think they can really upgrade on defense. So, yeah, we'll see. But those are the top teams in the NFC North. That's going to be a fun battle. They, they, I mean, that, they could, they're going to see each other, each other twice during the regular season. They could see each other again, not just in the playoffs. They could probably see each other again in the NFC Championship game. So, I think those teams are legit. Uh, on the AFC South, the Titans, I'm going to go 7-9. and nine. So, that's over. All of it is over the 6.5 wins. Of course, they could win six games, but... I think the Titans can be a little sneaky. Uh, the defense on paper looks pretty good. They get a pretty good defensive coach in there, and then uh, in, in um, Denard Wilson, and then offensively they had Brian Callahan, who's an you know explosive offensive mind, really going to upgrade the passing game, which is a totally different look Titans offense. So no one's going to know what to expect. They have weapons. Really going to come down to the offensive line here, but they can be a tough game plan, especially early on because teams won't know what to expect. And they're going to stop the run very well, which. You know, if you stop the run pretty well, that automatically puts you in it puts you in games. Uh, so I think they'd be sneaky. I think they're going to win. They're probably going to win seven or eight games. I, I actually like them winning eight games. That's kind of my prediction for the Titans right now. So I do think they get that over that six and a half, but it's maybe a little risky. I guess it's a shot they can win six, but I think they get that over. Uh, Colts, I'm in the same range, but... Uh, the Colts were a little tough. I, I almost really want, again, for every team... I did three different scenarios, so seven, eight, nine is what I have for the Colts. But it was a decision between seven to nine or eight to ten. I don't really see them getting seven wins, nor do I see them getting ten wins, even though there's a percentage chance they can get either. I'm more in the eight. They win eight or nine games, um, but they are a little tricky. It's really all. It's on two things really, but mainly Anthony Richardson. Um, you know, I can see multiple different scenarios with him. I could see him. The most likely scenario is him playing like uh, like second year guy that didn't play many games last year, but he's a flashy high upside guy. So we have flashy, crazy good moments. And then you have, we have moments where he kind of looks like a prospect still rookie still, which it's okay. Um, so that they're going to win some games, lose some games. There's a scenario where he's ahead of schedule and he's just impossible to stop. I shouldn't say impossible. I don't think we, that's realistic, but it's a SOB to stop maybe in game plan for, and then they win yeah, the 9, 10, 11 games. Maybe I could see that scenario, I suppose. And there's a scenario, I guess, where he really struggles because he's missed a lot of last year and he's a raw prospect. And I guess there is this unfortunate scenario where because he did get injured three times in four games last year and he hurt his throwing shoulder at the end there uh, of those injuries. So there is this unfortunate, hopefully not, you know, scenario where he's injured and then they're with that and they don't have a, as good of a backup. Oh, they do have, they have Flacco, but how, how would he be? You know, what he did with the Browns was good, but I thought Minshew with his legs, I thought fit that Steichen offense so perfectly. So I'd feel a little bit better about Minshew as the backup, but so a lot of different scenarios there at Richardson. So I do feel good about them winning eight or nine, but I guess maybe they're more a rangy team. The more I'm talking here, um, Another thing is last year, I do think they won some games because they kind of had that element of surprise. Teams that really didn't know how to game plan for a Steichen offense with the Colts happens a lot with the first year coaches, which I think it could carry over because he's a good coach, good play caller, good game planner. Uh, but they could get a, figured out a little bit more. So I do think they won some games off that last year. 
I just feel I feel like they're going to win eight or nine games. They're going to be like they're going to be like a very similar team to, to last year, unless Richardson's like way ahead of schedule and fully healthy all year. Um, so I'm at eight or nine, and Vegas is kind of at the same thing there, eight and a half. That's eight or nine right there. So pretty much the same thing there. Uh, the Jags, I. I like that win total for the Jags. I, I don't. I, I think you're going to win. If you bet the over on the Jags, eight and a half, I don't see them winning eight games. I almost went, the range I almost did was eight to 10, but I'm like, I, I do not see them finishing with eight or less wins. I just don't see it. They're probably going to win nine or 10 games. So I felt a little more comfortable with the nine to 11 range. So I kind of do like that, hitting that over. On the eight and a half, but they're, it's going to be close. They're going to win nine or ten probably, but I could see I more I could see eleven to me is more likely than eight. That's where I was at with that. So I like doing this, these ranges because it's you could you, you know it's to predict teams dead on like the record dead on is almost everyone's going to it's going to be unrealistic. Well, not unrealistic. People are going to be in the ballpark, I suppose. But I like doing these win ranges here for that reason. But I do like the over. On the Jags, Texans. I'm um, pretty high on the Texans for this year. It's got a they got a really good roster, a very good quarterback, improving quarterback, very good coaching staff. Um, D'Amico Ryan's gonna have the defense playing very well, tough to deal with every week. Um, the offense is. I think. Well, I think it's a consistent offense. I think they'll be pretty damn consistent. I think the only thing that wasn't consistent last year was punching the ball in the red zone, short yardage in crucial situations and as and Joe Mixon's huge. So I love that nine and a half win total and they're going to beat that. I think bottom line is 10 wins. So it's another one that I like there for the Houston Texans. I think it's a pretty safe one to go with over nine and a half uh, for the Panthers. They're at five and a half. I'm going to go. Yeah. That five to seven win range. Uh, a lot of it's on Bryce Young. What are we going to get from Bryce Young? I think I definitely think he'll be better than last year. Just how much better. I love the coach hire and Dave Canales. They added some weapons. They might have taken a hit on defense, losing Brian Burns, Frankie Lavu, you know, players like that. But so that they could be a su- super surprise team, though, and fire off, you know, and maybe murder that over in five and they crush that over in five and a half. Better word there. Uh, but five to seven is where I'm at with Carolina. Still some growing pains, but they're they're going to get there. They're going to get there. A lot, a lot on Bryce Young this year. Can he be Dave Canales' quarterback of the future? It's it's big big here uh, i like the falcons to get 10 to 12 wins i like the schedule uh i mean this team was like kind of tough last year like they were competing last year and it was with a disaster at the quarterback position and then you had kirk cousins who's a very consistent like you know what you're going to get from kirk cousins i know he's post a uh, she's the achilles tear so it's a little tricky there but we know what we're going to get from kirk cousins it's going to be a solid smart accurate quarterback he's not going to be elite but he can be pretty damn good you know um, and he ha- he has weapons. He's going to create more, you know, more out of these we- weapons. I think Drake London's an up and comer. I mean, he's already really good, but I think he's up and comer in terms of like could be a star. Uh, I think he could be that good. And I really wasn't that high on him coming out either. Uh, Bijan, you know, the, they're going to have the run game. They're going to have the pass game. I, I think a Kirk Cousins like type of play could really elevate like Bijan, especially in the passing game too. Uh, Pitts, he's going to elevate him. I think Mooney's really going to get going. Um, so they're going to be a good team defensively, well coached. I wish they had a little bit more off the edge, but it's a good team uh, built to win football games, especially in the regular season. They have a favorable schedule. I like them to hit the over nine and a half. Like I, I guess as a percentage, they can win nine games. I just think they're going to get over that. So another one that I like here, I like too many overs maybe. Uh, Saints, I think the Saints are on the decline a little bit. There's a chance that, because I feel like there was not a lot of chemistry at all. There's a lack of with Carr and his receivers last year. So another year that could change and that could help help them a little bit more. But I think Carr's declining and the Saints are still kind of recovering from all the spending they did in the, in the kind of the Super Bowl or bust seasons. Um, they're always competitive, but I, I just I, you know six to eight is kind of where I'm at. It's hard to see them win six games, at seven or eight. And again, that I thought I was a little low on them, but that's where the Vegas win total is at as well. So I, you know, it's kind of matching up here uh, a lot. Uh, the Bucks are a little tricky because they were much better than expected last year. I predicted them to be a much worse last year, as did a lot of people. Uh, but they won nine games. You know, we talk about them like they won ten or eleven games, and they might have been equivalent to teams around that range. 
Uh, they won nine games, but they're a pretty solid team, better than expected. So could they even take another step up, be better than expected this year? It's possible. I think losing Dave Canales is pretty tough. They're basically like a run-it-back team other than that. Um, so they could kind of get game plan for it a little bit more properly. Um, so I feel pretty good about them in the seven to nine win range. It's pr- probably gonna, they're probably going to win eight or nine. Uh, but their win total seven and a half. I was surprised by that. I thought that was probably going to be low on them as well. That their win total was probably going to be like eight and a half. Um, so Vegas kind of in agreement there. Chargers are tricky. They're tricky. I want to have a big range on the Chargers, but I didn't cheat here. I kept it within three games. Uh, but I want to have like a six to uh, you know maybe a five five to eleven win range really because. One, you you got a much better coaching staff. That's great. That's a, that's a win. Two, you have Justin Herbert, who could at any time could be an elite quarterback. Uh, three, I like the schedule. Uh, you know, I you you play the Chiefs twice a year, but I like the schedule overall. So that helps them. Four, they they have some stud players here and there. The negatives. Uh, that might have been more than four things. I, I was counting. I was losing track. The negatives are, yeah, they have stud players here and there, like star players almost, but. They have holes. I mean, they're a little bit lacking for Herbert's weapons. Uh, how consistent will they be because of that? Uh, the interior defensive line's a little rough. Like It's been rough in the past, but it's pretty rough right now where teams might be able to run all over them, control the clock, keep her around the sideline. I worry about that. That's like the, if you can run on a team, that's the easiest way to beat a team. Um, you know, So there's still a work in progress. Hardball's not – didn't tear a thing to put it all the way back to the top in one year. He's going to be a much better coach in one year than Staley was, obviously. I mean, it, it kind of, even though we haven't seen it, it kind of goes without saying. So there's big positives, big negatives, which results in me wanting to have like a five win to eleven win range. Now they're probably going to win more than five. They're probably not going to win eleven. So all right, six to ten range. But uh, and then we kind of shrink it a little bit more. I think they'll be in that seven to nine range. Um, seven if the holes kind of show and teams I think teams could run the football over them to be honest and then maybe the weapons not showing up for Herb, Herbert nine wins if well I mean if the weapons end up being better than expected like if um, if uh, McConkey I mean we know he'll be solid but if he's healthy all year and lights out better than expected and if Quinton Johnston kind of hits a stride gets going um, it, it's uh they, they could be sneaky, sneaky good. It's a sneaky team. But I, I think uh, even though it was a tough team to, you know, narrow down the win range, I, I you know, it, Vegas win total is at eight and a half. So I'm, I'm kind of in the same range as them. It's not a team I would bet on at all. Uh, the Broncos right now, I do have them at the 32nd team, unfortunately. I just think they'll be growing pains for Bo Nix. Um, I mean, he I think he's a guy that can come in and understand the offense, and he'll, he, he will do what he's told. So that's a good thing where he's kind of pro-ready. But he's going to make these NFL challenging throws. Um, you know that that's kind of the, the question: Will he make big enough plays? Um, and maybe he doesn't need to. If the defense was like stand out, like lights out, I don't really think it's there. There's some like you know really good parts of this team, but there's some there's some holes. I think there'll be a lot of growing pains. But they could be a really physical team on the ground, which Vontae Williams and Audric estimate. But I do have them in the four to six range, and I don't think that's odd. I know Broncos fans are gonna they're gonna hate me for that. I'm sorry, but it's kind of where you're at. I don't think Sean Payton's ready to turn this thing around right now. But I you know Vegas kind of agrees. They're they're at that five and a half win total here. Raiders, I got the Raiders going over. I, you know, I think that they, they could win six games. I know la- they're a little tricky because last year, the second half of the year, they were better than their record showed. They were much tougher after they got rid of, you know, McDaniels, how bad he was, and they have Antonio Pierce step up. A lot of motivation, players dying to play, dying to win. Um, so that could continue, but also it could have been, could that die off a little bit? Could that fire, you know, d- die off a little bit? Uh, could teams have more of a game plan for them since it was kind of sudden last year out of nowhere? Um, you know, they kind of got away with below average quarterback play. Uh, you know, so where's that going to be this year? Um, the defense last year on paper on paper looked pretty bad, but they played way better than that. I think Patrick Graham's a really good defensive coach. Max Crosby, I thought, was the best defensive player in football last year. And they got some underrated players. So where's it going to be out this year? But they do add Christian Wilkins. Him and him and Max Crosby are going to be studs there on the inside. So they're going to be sneaky. They're going to win. They're going to win games you're not expecting them to. Like one against the Chiefs, probably. Uh and they might lose games. Like they might have like a game like the Vikings game last year. What was that? Like a six to three final, was it? Or was it three nothing? One of the two. It just you know, not defensively a disaster, but um, you know, so I 
six and a half seems low, but it's a little tricky, but I got them in seven and nine. So I do have them over that. So we're a little bit of a disagreement with Vegas and that one, even though we're in agreement for most of these chiefs. I got the chiefs going over. Um, I mean, the schedule's not easy. I mean, the Super Bowl team here, the number one team, but it's, uh, it's pretty good for them. I think, I think they got better for the regular season. Uh, to be determined for the playoffs, Super Bowl maybe about the same, but they're different. But I think they get better for the regular season. Last year they had like some points where they struggled a little bit. Um, they had games they lost. They definitely should have won. Uh, Lions to start the year, the Packers game maybe. Um, there's probably more than that. Um, it's top of my head, just like the most memorable. They're both prime time games, probably why they're memorable. But um, and but why why were they losing those games? Why didn't they win as many regular season games as they should have or could have? Uh, because the weapons were, were letting Mahomes down, like even Kelsey at times. But I know Rasheed Rice is probably going to be suspended, but they had Xavier Worthy. It's going to be a weapon, a tough game plan. They had Marquise Brown, which is a perfect fit for, for Chiefs ball. Like they, they, they fit each other so well. I think we're going to get in. I think Kelsey had his head in his, in his ass because he had some off-the-field distractions uh, that happened to be up in the booth at the same time. I think he'll get his head out of his ass uh, this year, more like he did in the playoffs. Uh, you know, this year, kind of a you know prediction, uh, you know, a good one for Kelsey there. But uh, defensively, they did lose Snead, but they're so well coached, well developed on defense, and McDuffie's going to take another step up. Um, I like them to win twelve or fourteen games. I think they're going to they're going to win the games, the amount of games they probably should have. They were capable of last year. Um, so that's where I'm at with the Kansas City Chiefs. Cardinals. Cardinals are another one of those teams where I really want to cheat and put a huge range on them. I can see them winning. You know, four might be a little low, but four to ten range. So five to nine, maybe. I end up squeezing a little bit more. We go six to eight wins. But they're a little tricky because we really don't know the full potential of the Kyler Murray with this newer offense, you know, newer, newer staff. Uh, we don't know the full potential of it cause we didn't really see the full thing last year and they do get better. They add more pieces. Um, I thought free agency was more of like rental type pieces, like ban- like you're fixing things with a band aid, like you get better, but it's not like the full, like that's not what you want your team to look like in a couple years, right? You want better players. Um, but they do add a lot of quality players. I, mean, they, I thought the players they added to the draft are going to be more of an impact than, than not all, but most of the players they added free agency. Um, you know, but it's about staying healthy, looking at Kyler. And there's some people that, you know, think Marvin Harrison Jr. He has like little things pop up here and there, but I'm confident with them. I'm optimistic with them. Uh, and the, they'll be an inconsistent team. That's what they're going to be. The, what the, that sounded funny. What that's what they're going to be. They're gonna they're gonna. There's gonna be weeks where they are like, okay, watch out for the Cardinals. And there's gonna be weeks where it's like, ah, well, that was sloppy, you know. And that's kind of what the Cardinals have been for some time here. Um, so I, I think around you know six to eight wins is where I'm at with them. Seattle's a team I like the over on. I, I think uh, it's a sneaky, another sneaky team. Their their win total is at seven and a half. Um, I, they're going to win more than that. They're going to win more. And I went 8 to 10. Maybe they don't win. Maybe 10 seems like a lot. I could see it, though. But they're probably going to win 8 or 9 games. They're probably going to win 8 or 9. They're pro- Even 8 seems low. They're pro- this team probably going to win 9 games. And I, they might be more likely. They're going to more likely win 10 than 8, I think. So maybe it's 9 or 10. Uh, you know, Gino, I, people talk like he played. <coughs> excuse me. People talk like he played awful last year. I don't think that was the case. He took a big step down from the year before, but they bring in Ryan Grubb, like a different flavor of offense, like a different, like, and they do have Sam Howell behind him, and I think he can play pretty well, you know, in that offense as, as well. He has weapons. They have weapons at the receiver position. They have a two-headed monster at running back. They're going to be able to throw the ball. They're going to be able to run the ball. They need to make the offense line better. I thought they did that. They added some pieces. Is it the best offense line in the world? No, but they added some pieces that will help them. It will definitely fix it for now. Uh, then defensively, they add some pieces. I mean, they, Draymond Jones was a huge addition last year, and he was underwhelming, but he's going to be better this year. You add Mike McDonald, who's one of the better defensive minds in football right now. And he's their head coach, and he had Byron Murphy in there. This interior defensive line is going to be really, really good. Um, young players in the secondary. The, the defense is going to play better than, way better than what people think. Um, this is a sneaky team. They are going to win more than seven and a half ball games. 
They're gonna win. That sounds funny, but that's the win total. They're gonna win. They're gonna win more. They're gonna win at, at the very least eight games. I think. I think it's a really small range. Eight to ten is where is truly where I have them. I I think uh, Vegas sleeping on them a little bit. Uh, Rams. I like the Rams o- over as well at first glance. I gotta stop you there. I gotta stop myself there. At first glance, I like the Rams based on how this team looks on paper, what they're capable of, especially in the regular season, talent they have. Yes, I I think they they on paper they crush over eight and a half, but it's not what I would bet on because Stafford durability concerns, Kyron Williams, uh, Cooper Cup, they don't have Aaron Donald anymore, but they do other spots. They got better. They got better uh, on defense in other spots, especially in the secondary. Really in the secondary, um, so I wouldn't actually bet on it, but it's tempting because they are far better than an eight and a half win team. You know, um, they the, the offensive line looks a lot better. The interior, they're going to be able to pound a football whether it's Kyron or, or Corum, um, and they won games because of the run game last year. Kyron Williams was so good, and Stafford was lights out last year, better than people give him, give him credit for. And they have weapons for him, obviously. And defensively, I know what, no Aaron Donald. That's kind of the question, but they made you know they made they got better in other spots. Um, if they, if they're healthy, I mean, even if like it, it, they, uh, Kyron Williams is one of the better running backs football last year, so if he's out, of course they miss him. But if as long as Stafford's in there, like they're still gonna win some football games. So it's really what I'm getting at. It comes down to Stafford. If Stafford is healthy this this year, and he you can even miss a game, like they are gonna crush eight and a half wins. They're gonna crush it. Uh, you know, so it's a little tricky there, but it feels like an easy one at first glance. And the Niners, they have 11 and a half. I think it's a proper win total. I got them in that 11 to 13 range, but it's, if I had to put money, it's probably going to be 11 or 12. So a little tricky with that win total. Um, yeah, eyes are on two things. The defense, you know, they're, they're, you know, they already got rid of Wilkes. They're trying to find, they're trying to find another D'Amico Ryan. It's kind of what they're missing. Um, defense, it was pretty good last year, but it was very underwhelming at the same time. So where's it going to be at? And then offensively, Brock Purdy, all eyes on Brock Purdy. Um, does he get even better? Because if he gets even, yeah, that's a thing. Like maybe they could be, they could win the most games in football because if he gets even better, they're going to win more football games. But then you factor in, they still have Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel right now, big time players, but they, they drafted two slot receivers in Ricky Pearsall and then Jacob Cowling. Uh, more so it's focused on Pierce. So it was a first round pick and the, he, they're going to use, he's going to be a factor. And they just a team that do not like utilize. They utilize, they do not utilize a slot receiver. Like they, they from like receivers play in the slot, but they do not get a ton. I mean, they'll, they'll put, they'll put Kittle there at times. And I guess there'll be a factor there, but I feel like every other NFL team has like a stud player. They put there and he thrives there. Like it's really not the case. They have guys that can do it there, but that's not really like, go with their offense, but they made a, had a focus on that in the draft. So are they adding a little bit of a different flavor, a little bit something different to their offense? So that can throw some teams off and make them a little tougher and just uh, a little more fresh, I suppose. So the more I'm talking, I'm like, yeah, they pretty improves. Maybe the defense improves. Maybe they add us a little bit extra to them. Maybe they're just the best team in, in the end in the regular season. So, um, so the more I'm talking, the more I'm liking. But I, I don't know if they went 14 games. You know, I think 12, 12, 13, 11, 12, 13. I feel, I feel pretty good about that range there. So there you have it. Uh, video I want to jump on. It's a pretty early stage still, but uh, now the schedules are out. I like doing the win range, so then you know we have an idea where, where they can finish. You're not, we're not just relying on one specific amount of wins because uh, you know it'd be pretty tough to get a lot of those dead on for anybody. Uh, but that'll do it for this one. More content on the channel. Check out our draft coverage. Uh, check out our sponsors, GLD Shop, Liquid IV, Walk the Mock, Code GOAT for a percentage off. Link in the, in the comments for anything you look for. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.